In this special report, we review the GT3 RS Force Feedback Wheel and Club Sport Pedals by Fanatic. This special report is sponsored by iRacing.com. Welcome to our uh, new set. Well, you guys can't really see it here. Anyway, Darren Ganji here with uh, Sean Cole, and the new set's still under wraps. It's getting close, guys. Yeah, getting close. It is definitely getting close, and hopefully you guys will enjoy it. We're uh, kind of feeling at home here already, aren't we? Definitely. Anyway, we're here to uh, review the GT3 uh, wheel and club sport pedal package by uh, Fanatic. <laughs> the long awaited GT3. Long tease, man. We got a lot of crap for that, man. We teased the heck out of this wheel. But there was a reason for it. Yeah, sure. Uh, and the reason was first of all, dri final drivers weren't done. Uh, a lot of changes have been made to, to both. Um, to you know, to make sure that you know some of the bugs have been worked out. So Definitely one of those products that right off the bat need a little things, but it's coming along quickly. It's just kind of like a new car. New car comes yep. out, and you know what? The first of any new car, there's going to be bugs that you know, like the new Camaro just came out, and I'm sure this Camaro is not going to be as good as the next. That's if Chevrolet lasts until then. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, we're not going to get into that. We're here to talk about this awesome wheel and pedal set here. And uh, we're going to talk about that. As a matter of fact, the uh, first batch shipped a little late uh, because of some of the things that were worked out, and there were still some issues with them. Um, you know, I say awesome, but there's been some tweaking and yeah, it took some time. Yeah, and that's part of the delay. You know, that second batch, or you mentioned batch one, is uh, you know came out, but batch two is coming, and we're expecting a lot of the initial problems to be taken care of. Yep, yep, and, exactly. Uh, and that's another reason, you know, why we delayed getting all those things worked out, making sure we gave the wheel its best environment. And then being able to really hammer on it. I mean, we don't just look at a wheel and say, oh, it's pretty. Yeah, we've hammered on this thing. I've put <laughs> a lot of laps on this wheel. Um, and speaking of which, we're going to tell you what I got a little video that we put together here. And we're going to roll that really quick. It tells you all about this wheel. The GT3 RS wheel is 12 inches or 300 millimeters in diameter and is wrapped in Alicantra leather. There's three force feedback motors, two for vibration functions and one to handle the force feedback effects, all running through a belt drive system. Testing took place mostly on the PC, but it is also compatible with the PS3. Degrees of rotation, force feedback strength, and the vibration strength can all be adjusted on the fly on the wheel. Connection takes place via USB cable only. Club Sport pedals are made of aluminum. They come with a pressure sensitive load cell brake with the ability to adjust the maximum force with a potentiometer. The gas and clutch have contactless magnetic sensors which are supposed to last forever. There's also a vibration motor on the back of the brake pedal to indicate when tires are locking up. For tips on how we set this wheel and pedals up for use on the PC, go to our homepage at InsideSimRacing.tv and click on the FAQ link. So just the facts, it almost sounded like they produced, well, you know what, I think in, in the past, sometimes we miss a few of the you know, features of a wheel because yeah, we, you know, we want to jump in and talk about it and the things that are important to us, but we do miss some of those facts and I like the way you did that. Oh, thanks. Thanks very much. Yeah, and I'm sure, the, I'm sure Thomas at Fanatic will like that too because we, he, in the past he said, why didn't you mention the display <laughs> and why didn't you mention this? So got everything in there and uh, speaking of which, what's your favorite part of this, this combo, man? Well, you got to love anything that comes right out of the real Porsche car, so I'm going to go with the Alcantara le leather. I mean, you got to love that. I mean, right out of the yeah, real that, deal. Yeah, that is really cool. Um, I'll go with the, the, on the pedal side, I just like the adjustability of the pedals. I have just adjusted mine up and down, left yeah. and right, all over the place, so um, lots of adjustability and, and just, man, these things are bulletproof for the most part. So yeah, yeah. once you get them dialed in, it definitely takes some dialing in. It's a little teaser, but that doesn't get us to the scores and all of our opinions. It, no, it doesn't. And speaking of which, those are going to be coming up. And speaking of those, we've done most of the testing for this, uh, you know, on the PC with iRacing, the iRacing.com uh, simulator. Yeah. So And a great sim to test a wheel with. I mean, good force feedback, the laser scan tracks, feeling every bump. Yep. And speaking of which, we do have uh, an infomercial here from them uh, with Lee Diffie. It's actually really cool if you haven't seen it. It's two minutes long, tells you all about iRacing. Um, let's Lee roll Diffie. it. Lee Diffie, yeah.
The next generation of racing is here. Hello, I'm Lee Diffie from Speed and welcome to iRacing.com, an innovative PC-based simulation service that allows you to climb into a virtual race car and compete head-to-head -head against thousands of other racers, starting with rookies to top-level pros from all over the world. At the core of the iRacing service is the most accurate and sophisticated racing simulation software ever created. And it's so good that professional racers swear by it as a training tool. Drivers like Dale Earnhardt Jr., Justin Wilson, AJ Armendinger, and Alex Gurney. And many of them compete frequently in iRacing's online race series. But iRacing isn't just a training tool for the professionals. It's the basis of a new branch of motorsport, making the fun and excitement of real-time, professionally sanctioned racing available to everyone. iRacing offers unlimited seat time for a lot less money than you spend each month on your phone bill. And you don't need high-tech equipment or a computer engineering degree to get started. All you need is a reasonably current personal computer, a PC-compatible wheel and pedal set that you can buy online or at your local electronics store for less than $100. And finally, a broadband internet connection. iRacing's easy-to-use web-based service includes a quick start guide that makes it simple to download the software and start racing. Once you're in, you're away. iRacing has a wide variety of cars and tracks available, all modelled to the finest detail. Every major North American track and a diverse selection of oval and road racing machines. And new ones are being added all the time. Whether you're a pro wanting to tune up for your next event, an amateur attempting to learn a new track, or someone who dreams of enjoying the thrills of high-speed competition, iRacing offers everything from practice to arrive and drive racing to world championship competition. Check out iRacing.com to see how easy it is to get started. The next generation of racing is here. Okay, welcome back to our review of the GT3 RS and Club Sport pedals by Fanatic. And uh, thanks for tuning in and thanks for watching that, uh, that video by I, from iRacing. And I'd like to thank them for sponsoring the show again. So anyway, back for our famous rating scale. Eight, eight different categories, one through 100. Um, Sean, why don't you start it off, man? Wheel. I will gladly start it off. This one's exciting. Again, you, you know, we, this wheel's been a long time coming to the show. Anyway, when we talk about wheel, we have a lot of categories that overlap. Force, feedback, construction, other... I mentioned before the Alcantara leather. How many miles? What, thousands of miles? How many? I've, I've driven a ton, and you've driven some miles. A lot of yeah. people have turned some laps on this thing, and it's... It looks brand new. There's no... If this was a suede Momo, it would show waxing oh, yeah. where it starts to get that glazed look about yep. it. That's not going on at yeah, all. Yeah, and it feels the same all the way around as, yeah. you know, and this is where I'm gripping it the most and yeah. it, it feels exactly the way it did when, you know, the day it came out of the box. I love the center stripe, you know, orientation thing. As much as I like the illuminated buttons in the 911 wheel, I like the sleekness of these. You got to love the real emblem, the display and the ability to adjust things yeah, on the Yeah, it is fly. really cool. This is right up there in the the best of the best that I've seen when it comes to the wheel itself and what we're talking about. I actually gave it a 95 and Darren gave it a 97. Yep. So hard to do our, much yeah, better. Yeah, it's pretty much our highest scoring uh, wheel so far. Uh, next up, pedals. <laughs> and uh, again, one of my favorite parts of this whole package. I mean, I love the wheel though too. But uh, pedals, I gave it a 95. Sean gave it an 87. And uh, would have been a little bit higher if they didn't have some issues when they shipped. Um, there was a lubrication issue, like a lot of guys had to watch this video that uh, Thomas had put out. Um, I have changed the throw <laughs> on mine, so the throw's a lot shorter. Uh, so there were some issues with it, but overall, man, these things... Talk about your sim racers pedals. They do need a little bit of work, but dial them in for yourself. Yeah, firmware had to be updated. So... Um, Overall, though, awesome pedals. I mean, especially in a combo pack like this, you really can't beat that yeah. set of pedals. And, so. and bulletproof. I mean, all metal. And yep. I mean, yeah. 
Cool stuff. All right, next up, construction next. and durability. You got it. All right, and, and you know, like I said about the wheel, a lot of these things kind of overlap in others. When I think of construction and durability, I think of how well does the case fit. I think of the actual finish, and in this case, I mean, I use the word sexy. I might use it many times. You got the GT3 RS paint job. I think of that as part of the construction and durability. Uh, you know, it's a great wheel in that category. I gave it an 85, you gave it an 88. Yep. Back to the pedals really quick, I wanted to mention one thing. There's two different ways you can hook it up. One is USB and one is in the wheel. On, on a PS3, you got to hook it up directly to the wheel. But um, when running on the PC, you can hook them up separate and you get more resolution, you know, uh, when running it that way versus running only 255 bits of resolution running it directly to the wheel, 1023 when running it by itself, or 1024. And for those of you who don't know, it's a matter of uh, how many steps in this much range of motion versus, well, the same range of motion, but how many steps, how many positions are there in that range of motion? Right, right. I think it's called bits of resolution. I may be wrong, and maybe you tech guys can comment on our YouTube page. So, uh, But anyway, did you give their scores there? Uh, yeah, 85 for you, 88, uh, uh, 85 for me, 88 for you, and construction and durability. Next up, plug and playability, where out of this <laughs> whole scale, this is where it took the biggest hit. Yeah. I gave it a 60, Sean gave it a 65. Yeah. And, you know, we had some issues with the 911 Turbo because of the dongle and having to upgrade the firmware. This wheel was a nightmare. Yeah. Um, and it's part of the delays. We're getting through all of these, these bugs and yeah, it, hurdles. It, first of all, the most current driver is available only at 911wheel.com. Uh, that's uh, as far as last time I checked. Um, that's their blog. You can't even get it at the main site. Nothing comes in the package. The pedals needed the firmware updated. You can only do it on a 32-bit system. So there's a ton of issues. I mean, it, yeah. it was almost fail. And some guys might not even get through all the steps. I mean, they might just call it quits. Yeah, and I know there were some wheels that went back, but and I know on the next batch, a lot of these issues have been fixed. Sure. And I'm sure in future batches, that's definitely going to be taken care of. Like we were talking about, new car, yep. first batch out, yep. things are going to happen. Yep. So 60, 65. Yep, that's fair. Uh, mounting and installation. You know, I, I don't think we could go a whole lot into this one because we've covered the 911 wheel before. Same but, exact stuff. Yeah, I mean, and we always recommend hard mounting. It's got the under uh, bolts. Uh, you just bolt it right to your desktop or any definitely of your Definitely the way rig. to go, especially, and you'll see in my pod here that it's just mounted rock solid exactly not going anywhere and we mentioned the clamp it's usable uh definitely not our favorite clamp definitely not our favorite method the pedals comparing them to the 911 are a little bit larger they're definitely easier to hard mount so again being the the sim racers we are any flat surface and four screws and these things are bolted for life yep. and no trouble yep. they're real heavy too so if you have carpet they shouldn't move around a lot but it will take a little time. They're a little bigger than others, so it might not fit on every sim rig without a little adaption. Yep. Uh, with that said, I gave it an 80. Yeah, these things are heavy and <laughs> big, so see how big these are? You know, they're, they're, they're a good big set of pedals. <laughs> and so uh, I gave it an 80 for mounting and the installation, and Darren gave it an 82. Next up, force feedback. Yeah. Um, probably for this wheel, uh, as far as, um, what, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, price range, right? Um, price bracket, uh, probably the strongest, smoothest force feedback there is. Yeah, yeah. We have never really used it at full power. I mean, it's unnecessary. I can't. You know, <laughs> speaking of which, my force feedback uh, for people that are just buying the, the wheel new, um, I have it 100 on the wheel. Let's say in i racing, I have it down for ovals, down at about three. Road course racing, I have it at about eight or nine, depending on the car. So that's pretty low. I mean, that's if like I crank, no force feedback. Yeah, if you crank it up to 100, the wheel just starts yeah. just going crazy. But yeah. great force feedback. Um, for me, 92. Sean gave it a 90. Yep. And that takes us to cost. Uh, we mentioned the price, 299 for the pair. I mean, this is a ton of wheel and pedal for the money. You know, I think back years and years ago. I mean, 300 seemed obscene. I think I, I mentioned this to Sean earlier. I think I paid 250 for my first T1. Right. Which, yeah, that thing was a piece of crap. <laughs> yeah. That's my saying, piece of crap. Somebody, there's a guy <laughs> on the iRacing that, that always brings it up. He's going to hear this and he's going to say something there's about it. But yeah, that one. T1 was, I mean, for the time it was great. I mean, yeah. we got to finally race with the wheel. So, I yeah. mean, I can't say, you know, I loved it at the time, but... Um, you think of the Logitech coming out when it was brand new, 349 So, I mean, entry-level prices are always a little high. 
Three hundred bucks though. You're getting metal construction, all the great features we talked about. This, I mean, it's a ton, a bang a buck for uh, three hundred bucks. Well, as a matter of fact, these pedals on their own are are one hundred ninety nine, and the wheel is one sixty nine. So do the math. That's more than two ninety nine for the combo. So that's that's quite a yeah. that's quite a combo pack. Yeah, and a lot of this stuff really is. You know, this is high high end equipment. I mean, we're not just talking you know, uh, plastic stuff out of, you know, it, it, this is high quality stuff. So again, for cost, I'm going to give it a 93, which is a great score. Darren gives it a 95, which I mean, this puts this right up there in, in the best of the best in that category as yep. well. Yep. All right. Functionality is up next and um, just give you the scores here really quick. 94 for me and 90 for Sean. And the reason why we came to that was, uh, first of all, the display you know, and the functionality on that display, you know, the ability to tune your force feedback, your rotation, uh, you know, how far that, how much that the vibration motor inside the wheel uh, vibrates. And there have been times where I switch sims and I yep. forgot and oh my God, my force feedback settings are, and maybe I'm not gonna get it 100% right, but I can make that adjust or even better, degree of rotation, all of a sudden, oh, I'm in the drastically, anyway, huge, huge yeah, stuff. Yeah, you don't have to alt tab out, you don't have to worry about anything. Yeah. You alt tab out a lot of times and do stuff to you know make adjustments and I've lost force feedback yep so um, great functionality PS3 compatible with the pedals um, uh, you know the pedals are adjustable so like I said 9490 so that gets us to our uh, overall we're just about lot, done here man a lot of nine what is this our first 90s wheel where are we at here it would have been what's up that uh, plug and play ability killed it ah Plug and playability, we figured out if I would have given it an 80 in plug and play playability, it would have been our first wheel that was ranked overall in the 90s. It, it was a shoe been a 90. in. Yep. It was a shoe in. So that, that killed it. So my overall was an 87.875. Very was, good score. Yeah. And Sean, what was yours? And, a little bit uh, lower. I came in at 85.625 just to make it a little more complicated. And we completely blind. I He was scoring this. I was writing down his scores. I didn't tell him mine. And, and uh, I had already scored mine before he said yeah. his. So completely different. Yeah. Very close, though. Very close. So, closing thoughts? Look out, Logitech. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know what? This is definitely, they've got their, uh, they got their hands full. I mean, they've, yeah. they've definitely got some competition now. And that's good. Competition breeds better things for yep. everybody. You know, and I think there are people who are going to like each wheel. I'm not saying one's better than the other. I'm saying that everybody has always thought of the G25 as the go-to number one wheel. Yep. And I'm saying that is not an easy question to answer anymore. And that's good because hopefully both wheels will keep getting better and better. Exactly. And like we'd mentioned, we know that this wheel has gotten better um, in the second batches and, and so on and so forth. So... That's going to do it for this review. Thank you all for tuning in. I'd also like to thank our sponsor again, iRacing.com. Make sure you check them out if you haven't yet. Um, actually, watch episode 43. We're going to be giving away a three-month subscription. You're going to be able to win a subscription there. There you go. Uh, so make sure you tune into that. But again, check them out if you haven't, iRacing.com. And if you're new to the show, we did do a preview of iRacing way back. So if you go through our catalog, you'll see there's a lot of information about iRacing out there to be found. Yep. And... Check this wheel out at fanatic.com. You can actually get it at our store too. We have uh, we have them available there. So anyway, Darren Ganji, Sean Cole, thanks for watching. <laughs>